Next, we're going to cover forms. So we're on the HubSpot homepage now. We'll head on over to marketing this time. And under marketing, lead capture, we have the option for forms. Again, this is a fresh instance. Now, if you have an existing website, an existing non-HubSpot form on said website, there is documentation. So if you click on this link, you will see documentation on how to ensure that HubSpot can parse a non-HubSpot form. It is possible to do that as long as you have the HubSpot tracking on your website and it's configured correctly. Given that this is a fresh instance and you may likely be starting fresh with HubSpot and a website, I would recommend creating a HubSpot form in that case. And these are the steps involved. So we'll create a free form and there is a guide, but I'll go through the setup manually here and we are going to choose an embedded form. So this embedded form will be on a landing page of your website. We'll click next and there are templates, but again, we don't need to have, you know, a quick start for this because we are keeping it really simple. So we'll hit start. And again, the first time you set this up, you have a virtual tour, which gives you the rundown for each aspect of the UI or user interface. Now you always need an email. That's a given. This is an email sending platform. Uh, it has additional data and marketing automation capabilities, but at the heart of it, you need an email address. So at the very top of the screen, actually, you'll see that there is a uh, auto generated name for the form. We're just going to type up a name that makes sense. So you can call this investor sign up or sign up, whatever naming convention you have consistency is key. But certainly, you know, for the sake of simplicity, I call this a sign up form. We have email by default and you can make it. I would not make email optional, but you have that choice. You can edit it and there are more options, including adding help text, uh, default value and domains to um, block, including the option to go corporate only. So that's great. And in fact, I might actually suggest we do that here. So it auto saves uh, and there are unpublished changes. So we'll update this when we're done. I'm gonna add some more fields. Some of these are going to be custom fields and a few of them are standard. Let's start with some of the standard fields. A user might first think about the name. For the sake of simplicity, you know, you could have one field for name, but I recommend we choose first and last name, which come standard and default. Reason being, we want to normalize the data. So standardized data is always going to be not only beneficial, but really essential for consistency and ease of reference. So we'll make this required. We will add last name. We will make that required. So we have first name, last name, email. We can add phone number, for example, here. Again, you know, we might want to ensure that the important bits of data are marked as required. Another consideration is how many fields do we have? Again, depending on your target audience, you may or may not want to include a lot of information. Quality versus quantity is important. So you could just have an email. You'll have a higher volume. You'll have a higher conversion rate, but you'll have less valuable information. This is where the custom fields come in. So that's a good segue. So we want custom fields. Now, underneath contact properties, we've already created some custom fields under contact information, but you can actually just search them. That's the beauty of this. So if I type accreditation, before I'm even done typing it, I have the option to pull this in. We're going to make all of these fields uh, required because these are all crucial in our use case. But again, it depends on how your scenario looks. So investment amount. If I type that in, it will show up. And actually, timeline to invest is also something we want. Again, we'll make these required. We can add a message too, and that I would highly recommend keeping optional. So there's a message field here. And we can actually change the label 
to make it a little bit more user friendly. So let's do that and instead of calling this message, because this is user facing, this is what they see. It might be a little bit more inviting if we said something like anything else you'd like to share. We'll hit done and that's basically it. So we'll update that and publish it. There's no warnings, So watch out for any warnings and hit publish. You also have an embed code. So this is something you would send off to your web developer or a link. If you wanted to preview the form, you could preview it. You can open the link, copy it. Um, so that will give you the form. Next, we have options. So I'll leave this to default, but we have options to send uh, notifications when an email is submitted and we can have it so it pre-populates fields with no value. So I'll leave these as default, same as the styling, but again, you can customize it as you wish. There's a lot of capability here. And lastly, we're gonna create a workflow. So we'll cover that separately uh, for the email workflow. Um, we can create it here and we will set this up for the email journey. So this is basically how to set up a forum in HubSpot. Thanks again.